In the school cafe, a boy believes South Korea is a happy place with hamburgers, Cokes, and Nikes, but that also means being poor and making you pray for others, as seen when girls bully an innocent girl over her clothes. The bullying continues as they accuse her of seducing a new transfer student. When the new boy is labeled as rude, a big boy named Kim angrily throws his burger. Kim questions why the new boy is eating in class and not paying taxes in South Korea. The group joins in with comments. The new boy calmly explains his desire to live in South Korea due to lacking basic amenities like hamburgers, Cokes, and Nikes in North Korea. Mocked by the larger student, the boy remains composed, which agitates him further. Kim attempts to slap the boy, but the boy retaliates by throwing his Coke, causing Kim to fall. Surprising everyone, Kim's friends approach to fight the boy, but he defeats them as well. In class, the exchange students sit together. The girl thanks the boy, but he clarifies that he didn't do it for her. The girl warns him about those students. The boy mentions that if she continues living like this, there will be a major accident one day. Park Seong Do Young Jin, the high school's hang boss, talking to Chairman Lee on the phone, inquired about the school fight. Park told him all occurred because he did not go to school today and would take care of the matter. He went to a pub where a fat boy sat with his friends. He asked Park to watch their backs and wipe their shit, but he was surprised at what kind of bastard made a commotion when he transferred here. Park said he acted up as a defector, not knowing anything, and they should fix his habits. The boy was standing next to the window when that girl came and asked for the trash. The girl started crying and said South Korea might not be too different. Park, with his gang, was also standing there. Park asked his motive. The boy said he would take over what they are doing as earning money, and making high contacts is nice. Park took his wallet and asked him to work under him, and he would pay him 200 every month as he also went out with that innocent girl. The boy liked the deal and said he would use the girl as he liked. He whispered in the girl's ear that he already told her that if she kept acting like this, she would have a big accident. Park gave him his contract payment. The girl starts crying. The boy told her she would be his to from next time. Don't cry. Park was confused, and Hajin punched his face. He beat all his friends. He remembers his childhood when he was also used, and South Korea is not different, so he is done with being used. He beats all the boys badly. Everyone around there is shocked. Then he tells them he is Hajin from the 505 Special Forces. Hajin is training in a camp in North Korea while two officers watch him over the cliff. One officer told his superiors he was smart, had good learning capabilities, and could be a high-ranking official in South Korea. The officer is concerned about his loyalty as he is an orphan. The other officer assures him of his loyalty and shows him a picture of his only family, his younger sister. In school, all the boys come to beat Hajin, but he beats them badly. Park was terrified to see all this. Park said he underestimated him he would give him more money. Hajin replied 100 million then he would think about it. Park picks up a brick to attack him, but Hajin kicks his face. Sibiok apologized to Hajin but said this still happens if it's not you. A man named Seong Jiwon, NIST Team 3 leader of domestic operations, is sitting in a cafe reading the Hajin file. A girl named Ra Hongju, a team of domestic operations, came and ordered pasta, read the file, and thought the boy was only doing it to gain attention. But Seong told her he was a spy as he interrogated him. Ra shouted that he should go and catch him but said he would after eating the streak. Hajin and Sibyuk sat in cafe eating noodles. Hajin told her about her sister. After eating, Hajin took off, walked in a dark alley, and remembered her sister, who resembled this girl. Suddenly someone attacks. He is Park with his friends. He said Hajin is a defector with no parents. He needs to mess with him. Hajin got furious and said they messed with the wrong person and brutally beat one of his friends. Park's father slaps Hyung as he creates the mess and does not sort it. Park told him he was strong. Park's father asked his assistant Hyung to care for a North Korean guy who may be a spy. Then he went to the chairman. Hyung asked Park to follow the boys he gave him to care for Hajin. But Hajin beat all of them. Then Parked, ran from there and sat in the car and asked the driver to drive fast. But Hajin broke the car mirror, kicked him and his driver and asked the driver to take him to his father. On the other hand, Hyung with his friends playing snooker. Hyung worried that Park and the boys would not return, as Park's father would ask them. His phone rang. He picked up. He came to know Seongdo had been kidnapped. They got worried then Park's father called Hyung and told him he was already there. He is sitting with the chairman, he asks him to leave. Chairman scolded him, and he broke the finger of the park. Both shocked, Hajin told them to stay still. Park's father got furious but stayed silent. 
chairman shouted at him why he was. Still, he told the chairman to give him a minute, but he kept shouting, and then Park's father punched his face. Then Hajin told him he wanted to make a deal. Yang Jun Group Transaction Ledgers so far. He wants it all. Park's father shouts at him and asks him to let go of his son, but Hajin breaks his other finger. His father comes to beat him, and Hajin says the negotiation is over. He tried to punch Hajin, but he put his son's face in front of him and punched him. The chairman was unconscious. Hajin asked him if he was ready to talk and called him Northern Snakehead Comrade. He surprised. Then he punches him and tells him he is a spy. On the 13th of October 1990, men sat in a cafe watching TV when President Noex declared war on crime. People mocked how they catch thieves like them. Suddenly, many men arrived, beat the people sitting in the cafe, and captured them. Hajin, with his officer, caught fish on the river bank. They say the North Korean security department didn't expect the agents who went over to South Korea, an uncontrollable group, to be divided into southern and northern divisions. The officer asked Hajin if he was going to take out the debt. Hajin held the fish, said yes, and ate it raw. At present, Hajin told him this was his last chance to save his son. Park told him North Korea would be after him if it were not him. Hajin asked Chang Su to hand over the school to him, and he will bury the rest. He asked what if he refused Hajin break his son's arm and told next is his neck. Siangdo's friends called and worried about him the next day in school. Hajin came. One boy was going to say something furiously, but Hajin kicked his face he fell. He asked others to sit down. Everyone sat as if they were afraid then he told them that from now this was his school. Park is hospitalized Haigung asks Chang Su what happened to him and why he gave data about Yongjun High School. Young is worried that this will be a big problem for other schools they manage. Park's father said it's not a problem if only they get rid of Hajin. Then officials came and arrested him for an organized crime group. One of his colleagues was surprised at where he got the source from. In the arcade, Hajin was playing games officer came to meet him. In the negotiation room, Hajin accepted he was a spy and told the officer some insights. The officer asked if he wanted to surrender and live in South Korea. Hajin replied no. His family was held hostage in the north. Instead, he wanted to become a double spy. Then he gave him all the data of Yongjun and the business. He told the officer that if he caught Park Changsu, he could track the Bukdu or Namsan clans which came together in the 90 seconds. The officer gave him a picture of his sister doing well. In school, Sibyuk suddenly remembers Hajin's advice to fight, and Minyoung slaps her head. She asked him about her relationship with Hajin, and her mother was at the hospital, so she brought him to her house. She punched her face, fell, and was unconscious. Everyone got surprised. Hajin came. She thanked him. Ra Hongmi Yangjin group. The third daughter is doing yoga in her apartment. Her friend asked about custody of the school exchange. She said she knew as he had lunch with CEO Lee. A boy named Kang Jiangman roams in school in search of Hajin. Hajin, in class, approached him and called him a new enslaved person. At night, the chairman gives the picture of Hajin to Kang to deal with him. Kang said leaving the park group to the defector was not a good idea, and the president wanted something else. Kang just wants to catch and beat the boy. Ra Hongmi came and saw the picture and said he was handsome. She asked Kang why he was dealing with him if his family was not involved in these things. Kang replied that he was curious. The next day in school, he finds Hajin. He tries to punch him but stops and throws the table at him. Kang catches the table. He told Hajin he does not have a personal grudge, but he received a request from someone uncomfortable with him. Then they start fighting in class. The teacher tried to stop them, but they did not listen and continued to fight. He was swimming in the pool and asked Sunbi to join, but he was working on his laptop. She asked him if he had information about the Namsan clan affiliated with Park Changsu to give to the informant. He replied that he was just giving him a little backup, and he gave great results. She told him she didn't understand what motivated Hajin. He wanted to save his sister, but the school had nothing to do with it. Sunbi told her that maybe he wanted to dedicate it to spies. In class, both were fighting when Hongmi came. Hajin knocks him off and throws him outside of class. Hajin apologized to the teacher. Kang's shirt opens his body is covered with tattoos. He said it's been a while since he had this much fun. Kang again tried to punch him, but Ra stopped him by picking up his hair and taking him outside of class. I in the evening. Kang texts Hajib to come and fight. Hajin is living in a group home. The homeowner called him for dinner, asked him if there were any issues, and let him know and he offered him clothes and his shoes. Then he told him that he had to go out for some work after dinner. Then he sends Kang a location to come. He got furious he replied with only one text. He went to the place and opened the gate aggressively. But there are many people in uniform. Hajin used him as a scapegoat. 
they all attacked him. Hajin went to this place earlier, beat them, and sent that address to Kang. Hajin, in another dress, went to this place and met their leader. He asked you are the guy who beat his men and tried to split them up. Hajin beat all of them. The leader throws washing powder on him and attacks him. On the other hand, Kang beat many men, but many more told him to give up. Kang refused, so one boy attacked him with a bat. But someone threw the bat at him, and he fell off. Two boys ordered them to stop fighting and said that just because their owner was not there did not mean they should go at each other's throats. One is Jiang Tiju, a renegade organization, the other is his worker. Everyone asked who they were, then his companion stepped forward and told everyone he was the owner of the territory. And he is Ti Jun Hyung Nim's driver and messenger loudspeaker Kim Do Jin. They all attacked them. The leader attacked Hajin and threw him outside the window. He tried to kill him with the chair. As he got up, he killed him, but then Hajin stopped him and kicked him off. Ti Jun beat everyone. Kang was shocked and tried to run away, but Hyung stopped and asked about the head. He said he didn't know and would punch him and ask if he looked like a plaything. Siabyuk came hospital to visit her mother nurse told him she had a visitor. She was surprised and went to the room. A man was sitting on a chair sitting next to her unconscious mother. She asked him who is he. He told her he was her dad. Hajin spares the leader, thanks him for his mercy and pledges his loyalty. But inside, he thinks he is only lost because his guys are outside, and he will get revenge. When they went outside, all his men were on the floor, bleeding. He shocked. Hyung Min is beating MWA Jin. Hyung asked them who they were. The leader was shocked to see all his men on the floor. One man called him boss. Hyung Nim asked him to hand over the laundromat to him. He tried to punch the leader, but Hajin stopped him, pushed him back, and said it was his now. But Hyung stopped his attack and fell to the floor. In the hospital, Officer Sunbi is sitting in Chang Su's room. He is injured as he attempted suicide and was handcuffed. The officer asked why he had done this because of his son. He warns him that if he stays silent to make the headline. He is a North Korean spy and a team member who can gang. Chang shouted, and the officer hit his head and told him he could not save his son by staying silent either way. He was a dead man, so he should speak, and he will keep it off the record. Chang Su told him the gang was made up of formal special forces, using former spies as their brain and clueless South Koreans as their muscle. The officer said Jiang Ti took down the rival group all alone. Hajin and Hyung are fighting. Both are powerful. Hyung plays good moves but Hajin also playback. Leader smoke and see them fighting. Suddenly he shouts that they are in trouble as the territory gang comes in droves. Three bosses from three gangs came with their men and told Yitik that they joined hands and were not working under him anymore. And they came to take over laundromat and asked his men to attack Yi. But he told him that he was retiring now and Hajin was the new boss. But they thought he was bluffing and attacked him. But Hajin kicks him. They all attack Hajin, Hyung, and Kang, and they start fighting. Officer Sunbi came out of Chang's room. The girl was waiting for him outside Sunday asked her why she was there, and she replied that this was her hospital, and that she wanted fried chicken. But Sunbi replied that he did not like fried chicken. Suddenly girl runs off the elevator, an older man runs after she calls her S.A.E. Byok. Sunbi was shocked and thought is he alive. His name is Sunbi Nim. Hajin beats many men and saves Yi Kang and Hyung from fighting and beating those men. The bosses thought they would tire as humans have limits and do not overpower their quantity. But all four fights were so good that they got shocked and terrified. During the fight, Kang told Hajin he was the worst and used him as bait. He will see that matter later, but he did not take measures. He said gladly he would take it after this, and his measure has arrived but needs to be on time. And many men in suits arrived with a beautiful woman's lead. Hong Mai came with her men. Kang workers attack them, but they easily beat them. Then one man told his boss she was the third daughter of the Yang Jun group Ra Hong Mai. They are all shocked at what she is doing here. Kang also got surprised and asked her why she slapped him and said she only came to rescue him, which is why Hajin pulled him into this. She called Hajin tricky, and he replied that he needed her blessing to start a business just like Xiang Du did from the real owner of Gusan. Five years ago, park changes were fighting men in the rain. A man named Ra Hong and a woman are standing in the building, watching them fight. Man asked why they send people to school when it's only for welfare programs. The woman replied that because everyone is doing that, they will die soon, and students will be accomplices. They got a bunch of kids who know how to fight, and they use them as bodyguards for upper-class kids. Park beats both men, then Hong congratulates him and says he oversees the air protector program. He will do the business as he wants, and police sweep the area, and in 3-4 days, the neighborhood is clear. Until then, he goes on vacation. 
In the restaurant, Sunbi tells the girl that the services that took over the Gusan Air Protection Program gave out four subcontractors and four gangs formed. And those gangs began to want independence by taking Park Hajin through them to feed. Hyung asked Hong to hand over Changsu territory. One man tried to stop him from behind he beat him off. He said that he was the successor of Park Chang. Hong asked Park Changsu is screwed up and how she trusted him. Then Hyun beats her three bodyguards to show she has to trust him. Kim told him that headquarters called them as they knew the Yang Jun group was there. Then he leaves. Sunbi told the girl that one person was overflowing with loyalty and piety. He will do anything for Yang's group. Hong said Hajin is silly. He should know there is always a bigger fish. As he is ready to fight, all three boss gang up with Hajin. They both start fighting, and both are good. In the end, three bosses attack him, but he beats them. Then Hajin grabs him from behind, and both fall to the ground. With his last move, he beat the bodyguard and fell unconscious. Everyone shocked. Hong went home tired. Ra Hongmi asked her why she was home early, and today's overseer was chosen. Hong asked how she knew she replied that she was with Nis. Hong asks her about Hajin and what role she gave him. Red Hair replied that she could not tell her. Hajin gives the role of overseer to Sun Ye. Everyone supervises and asks them why he creates all trouble. He replied that he wanted his share and want to transfer tea to his school. The next day in school, Yi is sitting with Hajin and Sibyuk. He asks her if she is Hajin's girlfriend she replies that she is just a friend. Yi said it meant he had a chance. Kang slapped on his head from behind and told him to behave. Kang told Hajin he wanted to fight, and Hong grabbed his hair. Suddenly she sees Sibyuk and says she is cute and hugs her. Hajin asked her to go back, but she asked to repay to transfer Yi here. He asked how he would repay her. She came close and said that with your body, Hajin said he was not working for her and had an appointment today. Hong asked if he didn't need to help her with some school stuff, but he said it was urgent that he had to go sightseeing in Seoul. A man Ma Yom Tong came and said how amazing. After 70 years of war, the North struggled while the South developed so much. Hajin is surprised to see him. Then he said we couldn't choose people we love or a country to give our loyalty, but the most important thing is who gives value to our worth. That's why he is with the Buck Da Gang. He asked Hajin as he took down Park Chan their enemy, to prove his worth to them and won a decent position in their ranks. Hajin said he wants a good career for himself and his sibling in the north. They shake hands, but Yom tells him he knows one small issue about his deal with Nis. And now, when his position is unstable, he solidifies his position thanks to him, and his three men standing behind him. On a sunny day, Kang Hyun Ho, the manager, and Jang Sun Gang head with his son cutting peppers in his garden. His son gives up as it's so hot. His son, why are Hyung's here? He asked Seong Jion why he was outside. His son asked Seong if he had heard the Buck Du gang was in chaos, even peddling drugs. He told him they were doing anything that made money due to economic hardship in the north. Hyun asked what the police were saying. Seong said their forces are scattered, so getting to higher ups is difficult. Hyun took a pepper and told an insect called the Thrip, ruin a year's yield. They keep coming if you kill a big one, and the Buck Du gang is the same. To stem their flow, they need to rip them all out. In Seoul, all three men attack Hajin with knives, but Hajin beats them. Yom is impressed with him. In the park, Seabrook is sitting his father is also. She did not want to talk to him. He apologized and gave her his number. When she feels like talking to him, she will contact him. And after 10 years, whatever he says looks like an excuse. Yom attacks Hajin with a knife, but as usual, having beaten him and said he is already a liability to the Bukdu gang. He knows he embezzled lots of money from the meat distribution network. And if he knows, the gang also knows this. And if he finds a traitor, they think differently, then he throws a knife at him, but Hajin plays it. He tries to fight, but Hajin overpowers him. Then he said he would get him a deal with Nis so he could keep his money and get witness protection. And in exchange, he assigns him as a deputy, so he takes over the business after he is gone. He agreed as he had no option. Then he gave him a picture of Siabok's father and told him he wanted him dead. Hajin obediently accepted the task Yom told him he was a man, a former Nis and Hid, and he was related to him. Hajin got shocked, and his daughter goes to the same school as him. The next day in the school cafeteria, Hajin observing Sibiok, and all students were surprised to see the group. Hajin took a cutlet from Jang's plate. He heated up, and he gave his portion. He already took a whole plate of cutlets and gave him. Hong asked them to shut up, and she talked to Siabok lovingly and thought about how pretty and different she was from her. Siabok thinks about her father, while Hajin thinks it does not matter who he is opponent, he will eliminate them. The officer asks the deputy child why he did not tell him that Du Yong Sunbi was in the south, and is he thinking of cutting ties with Yong Sunbi? 
Chief said these are words from the North. They want a summit, and the government seems to be backing it. The officer asks why the cost is Sunday when he just came back to the South. The chief advised officers to stay calm. Yon was sitting in front of the sky and thinking when his superiors sent him to Morocco and said he was a dead man and should not move back, and they made sure his family lived well. He wishes things to return to and how they were. He thought how foolish he was to become a father after disappearing decades, and it was best for him to disappear again when suddenly a man attacked him from behind. But he saved himself and killed him. As asked by the group if North sent them, Hajin replied yes, they want him dead. Yon ran toward camp. All men went to catch him, but he had an arrow bow, and he killed most of them with arrows. He drew one arrow to the roof, and many nuts and bolts fell from that, injuring many more. In the end, he beats everyone. Only Hajin stands and appreciates him for being well prepared. In Kang Hyun's house, Sibyuk came to deliver food to his son. At the door, he got surprised to see her and offered a piece of chicken. But she refused and took off on her cycle. Hajin jumps outside the tent, and Yong shoots at him. Hajin throws a sharp stick from outside, attacks Yong, and grabs his gun. Both fight well, but in the end, Yong pushes Hajib, and both fall Hajin sees LGP cylinders and shoots at them. It blasts Yong, who gets injured, and Hajin puts a gun on his head. Sibyuk is on a cycle of thinking that Jiang Min's family is rich. Had his father been by her side, would her life have been better? Suddenly a car hit her. While all men with injuries are watching, Hajib is holding a gun at Yong and shooting him. Four men loaded Siabyuk in the car, and she remembers her father. Song as Siabyuk got in an accident, and the boys got out of the car to load her into the car. Jiang Min arrived and noticed that it was Song as Siabyuk. He fought the guys to free her and asked if she knew them, but another man came in the car and hit him with the car. He fell unconscious. Then the boys loaded both of them in the car and kidnapped them. Hajin was standing and looking at the building on fire when he heard dads talking to Hyung Nim and saying that he was incinerating the scene and the body. He told them that if they had captured the daughter, he would look into the network to send her off. Hajin looked astonished and said that he wanted to meet the boss. When they gained consciousness, Song and Jiang found themselves kidnapped with their hands tied. He tried to free his hands and succeeded. Song also knew what to do in such situations, and they encountered the locked door. Layla received a call from director, who told her to summon the entire team. Hajin was taken to meet Hyung Nim at a restaurant. Hajin asked about the boss, so Hyung quoted a saying by Machiavelli and said that all humanity is greedy and hypocritical. But our boss is the most greedy and hypocritical. Hajin said it was not just betrayal, everything was planned from the beginning. Hajin punched Hyung and said that he was like his boss then. Song and Jiang were standing behind the door when he told her their escape was easy as there was no heating device in the room. The mechanical system can't handle sub-zero temperatures, and, in many cases, people get trapped in these places, therefore, the manual device is set to be opened from the inside. He then opened the door, but the gang was already standing outside. Jiang fought them all and was about to leave with Song, but he got stabbed in the back while trying to protect Song. Hajin was running and encountered Yo Tikyong and his fellow, Kal Inbyum. He tried to fight them, but he was stronger than Hajin. They told him they were on a special mission from the North organization. Jiang got stabbed, and the leader arrived and asked if they were dating as they cared for each other. Another man came from back and took Song towards him by her hand, and Jiang fell unconscious. Two gangs were fighting when Layla arrived and inquired about Song Sae Byok. Song asked the gangster why he had kidnapped her. He said that her father was a northern spy, and ten years back, he was taken to Aoji coal mine. But he had moved to South Korea. Therefore, she is taken hostage. The gangster said they would kill her as they didn't need her anymore because her dad had been killed. She started crying, and as they were going to inject her, his father came. The gangster couldn't believe that her father was still alive. Hajin and his companion were standing in the rain, waiting for the signal to turn green. When the companion asked Hajin if North had ordered him to kill the man, Hajin was confused about whether he should kill him or not. His companion advised him not to kill him as he is a former agent and may be beneficial to him. Song remembered her childhood days with her father. She was worried about her dad's injuries and said he shouldn't have come out. He said that he came to protect his daughter. The gangster stabbed the father. Hong Mi inquired about Song Byuk's location when one man yelled if she had heard anything from Hajin, who ran while they were fighting. Hong Mi wondered if it was Hajin's plan. Song's father took out the gun and asked to let her daughter and he will stay. Song refused. He said that he would catch up with her later, but the gangster didn't let anyone go and said the gun was empty. He threw the gun at the gangster and ran to his daughter. 
He let her out, closed the door behind him, and began to fight them. Song cried and hit the door with an iron rod. Meanwhile, Hajin broke the wall with a heavy vehicle and said that Song's father was supposed to pretend to be dead. Hajin said that the former spy should keep a weapon with him or it would be tough for him to fight, and then turned to the gangster and said that they had a lot to exchange. Yo Tikyong and Kal Indium were looking at where Hongmi was standing. Yo said that Hajin and Hongmi had attracted Kal's attention, but there was a gangster below Hajin. Kal said that they had entrusted Hajin with the disposal of Mei Yom Tong. Yo said that Hajin was acting suspiciously and that the picture he sent was edited, but maybe the picture he received was already edited. Hongmi was astonished at what are they doing there. Hajin said that the gangster had betrayed him. The gangster said the situation now will not be the same as in Namsum because his number 25 is special. Hajin fought them, and the former spy killed the gang's leader. Song hugged her father, and Hongmi arrived. She interrogated the ongoing situation there. Two spies were arguing about Hajin at a restaurant. The man with disrupted cheek skin was shocked to hear that Hajin was suspicious. The other spy said he had another objective besides his real objective, and they couldn't do anything if Hajin were in South Korea. The first spy said that he made Hajin remember his real objective. The noodles were presented by a lady named Lim Yo. Kang H. Dianho, who was a promoter of the street night group of the Joseon dynasty, asked if Hajin had talked with Hongmi. Hajin delayed the interrogation. Kang told him about Korean food sold at a Chinese restaurant and said he was curious about Hajin's nationality. Jiang was playing a video game and was calling his friends. He seemed conscious about time. He was screaming at his opponent. The owner of the gaming room, who was also his opponent in the game, came and hit his head by saying that he hadn't noticed. But they were in the same room playing the game. Hajin came, and the girlie said, that isn't Hain going out to meet some woman. He said that she was her class fellow. The girlie took him to his room and said he dressed like a grandma. She gave him a dress shirt to wear and left for her part-time job. Hajin was about to leave when it started to rain. Hongmi called Hajin and remembers Song's father saying that he asked Hajin to help and met him by chance, but she wasn't willing to believe that this happened by chance. The only information she can find is that he's a North Korean defector. The former spy's new name was Liam, and he was given a new identity. He now worked as Hongmi's driver. While talking in the car, they saw two cars, and one of the drivers was trying to hit the other car. Hongmi was infuriated and asked the driver to hit his car. The boys surrounding Jiang said they lost the game because of Jiang. But before they could punch him, Jiang attended the call and said he had to go and would pay for the game room for another 10 hours. Jiang asked on call about her location and turned around to see that Song Sae Byok was standing there. Kang and Si Byok went to a restaurant while Kang was nervous. While he took a short leave from her, their class fellows arrived and began to mock her. Hajin met Seong Sikyong, the executive director of the Black Bean Association who gave Hajin a bank card and said that the chairman said that Hajin already knew about this. The bank check was for $500 million. This money was to eliminate rivals within the association and would be treated as an investment to secure the North Spy. All connections to save Hayung are settled. There were two ways to save her. One was to deal with the North by acquiring its main source of funds, while the other was that Hajin would go to the North himself. But Seong said he would test his loyalty to pass him for the mission. He was riding the bicycle and was already late when a dog named Max crossed his path, and Yi fell. The dog was to attack the girl, but Yi saved her while Max bit his arm. Max's mistress quarreled with them for hurting her dog and denied that the dog bit Yi. The girls were teasing Song Sae Byok on her hair and skirt and were about to spill the coffee when Kang returned and took the glass from her hand. The girls were puzzled at his presence with her and wanted to leave when the boys from the game room came to their table. Kang didn't want to create a scene in front of Seabyuk and wanted to leave, but the bully girl held Seabyuk's hand and said that Jang could leave, but Seabyuk could not. She insisted on Seabyuk apologizing for her previous behavior, but Seabyuk threw lemon juice on her face and mocked her by saying, sorry. The boy from the gaming room was about to hit Seabyuk, but Kang kicked him. He then apologized to other people in the restaurant for creating a disturbance and told others to do the same. Seabrook also cleaned the table. Max bit her owner, so she learned that Yidek wasn't lying. Yi and the girl then went to treat his arm. Hajin fought the Siong and defeated him. He also met his roommate while Jiang was constantly messaging Hajin. Siong called the director to tell him about the performance of Hajin, who told him to continue the plan. Jiang messaged Hajin that he had fun with her and should plan another hangout. While typing to reply to Jiang, she received Hajin's message and began to text Hajin instead of Jiang. 
Lee Myung-sun, a North District Prosecutor's prosecutor, called Kim song ires grandmother and told her that her account would be seized as her account was involved in some cases. The grandmother denied her involvement, but the prosecutor said that the case may take two years. Till then, she can't use her account. She seemed worried and asked for help. The prosecutor tricked her into taking all her money out of her account, putting it in a pot outside her house, and not telling anyone about it. When she left after doing so, Hajin's roommate came and took out the bag full of money. Youngji went to aunt, who told her that more than the money she brought to send her grandma to South Korea was needed for the Chinese connections, including bribing the executives, travel expenses, and food. Aunt told her she was wasting money on an old woman, but she replied that her grandma was her only family. To make more money, Youngji was offered a part-time job where she could earn about 15 won per day. If she could work long enough, she could save 100 million won. The job was to deliver confidential documents through specific companies. After delivering the package, she was told that 150,000 won had been deposited in her bank. Jiang thanked Hajin for saving Duong Sunbi and taking care of his identity. Hajin asked about the next target while Jiang seemed worried. But Hajin said finding the North organization is challenging as it is scattered into small gangs. Jiang asked about Mei Yong Tong and Hajin replied that he had to obey Hajin if he wanted to live. Joe Malduck was the president of the Central Board of Directors. He was tricking other people for their money when he learned that one of his team members had tricked him. The boy had stolen the money that was in horse fodder. This infuriated Joe, and he killed the boy and asked to sell his body for 12,000 rupees. The loss was 100 million dollars. He came to know about the girl that came for a part-time job. He agreed to this. While Youngji was putting the bag in the required location and was shocked that it was her 10th delivery of the day, she slipped, and the bag fell. All the money got scattered, and she realized she was committing a crime. She wanted to call the police, but rather, she called Aunt to tell her she had the money to bring her grandmother. The gang members were eating ramyeon at a restaurant when they noticed Youngji running away with the money. They got up to chase her but lost her track. They went to report it to Joe Malduck, who became furious at the loss of money and was torturing the member for losing her track. His assistant told him that although the case wasn't reported to the police, he had disposed of the fake bank accounts and phones they were using. He assured him he had sent someone through Mr. Jang's side to capture the girl and return the money. Joe Malduck said he would kill them all if he didn't get his money back. Youngji was returning to her grandma and realized the money she ran away with was retrieved illegally, so she wanted to avoid getting reported. She was thinking about saving her grandma when a man came from behind and wanted to hit her with a hammer, but the hammer didn't hit her. Hajin met with Yim and asked him to stop smuggling. He told Hajin that Nis knows how they hide fake luxury goods inside imported meals and that smuggling is profitable. Hajin said that continuing this way would affect meat distribution. But he had a plan for this. Yim asked him what he was trying to do in the North organization. Hajin replied that he wanted to be successful. But Yim said there must be another reason. So Hajin said, freedom. Two men entered her grandma's house and Yonggi screamed. Meanwhile, Hajin entered but found silence. But he knew they were standing there. So he said he would hit the man standing on the right side, on his sensitive area, if they caused any damage. One of the men tried to hit Hajin with a hammer. Hajin fought him and told the other man that the turned-off TV was acting as a mirror for him, and he saw them both standing there. Yonggi hit the other man, and then Hajin fought him. He asked if she was okay, and they would continue the discussion after cleaning the mess. Kim was walking beside Hyung and looked excited as he took him to where Aunt dealt her business, but the place was destroyed. A van stops, and gang members come out and ask them to go. This infuriated Hyung, and he fought them. Hajin sent Youngji to a friend's place and went to Yi to get help from his guys. He asked that man if he was an illegal resident and belonged to Yambian. He threatened that he might get into trouble if he didn't answer truthfully. The boy told Ajisi he was mistaken as they were only Ant's guests and didn't mean to create a scene. He said they were private loan sharks and Ant had run away without paying her debt. He told them that if they wanted to find Ant, they must find Mr. Jang's boat near Inchin Dock, a gambling house run by donations. Hajin went to find Ant. Youngji and his fellow told him that there are mere instruments to track the delivery, and also told him the location of the ant, and about a Yanbian countryman named Mr. Jang who owns the boat, which is a big casino. They told him to put 140,000 won in a white envelope and write black family in Chinese characters if he wanted to enter the boat. After Hajin left, both men laughed because they had given Hajin a code word to get killed. Hajin got on the boat and got attacked by the members of the boat then he realized those people had fooled him. Joe Malduck asked about any call from Yanbian from his assistant, and worried they had run with his money. 
but the assistant assured him that Mr. Jiang's management was very tight. But Joe Maldick seemed suspicious about why Mr. Jiang's members could not catch the call. He became angry at his assistant and threw the soup on his face. Ant was gambling with a man and lost to him but accused him of cheating and started to misbehave. The man demanded his money and said that she had to pay with her body if she hadn't the money. Ji Gongji, who was the gambling house and ship manager, came and hit her with a cane. She demanded to lend her some money so that she might win this time. But the manager said that she didn't have any more collateral, and that he would take her eye off as collateral. She became scared and ran. The manager's workers started to chase her. The rain was heavy, yet Jang could go to the boat and wanted to capture Ant. Hajin was fighting with the guys on the boat and realized that the white envelope was used to show condolences, and the black family refers to the stateless person who has no registered family in China or a ghost. The 14 in 140,000 one meant he wanted to die. This was the code word used when the Koreans on Mr. Jang's ship failed at a mission. They threw a net at Hajin to capture him and were about to hit him with a hammer when Hyung and Kim arrived and helped Hajin. He came on Hajin's request to escort Young Ji and met Hong there. He remembered Hajin telling him that his family would be home this evening. Hong thanked him for the day when he saved her from the dog. Young Ji inquired how he knew Hajin, so Yi told him he was his classmate. The girls were shocked to hear this as he looked like an adult, and Yi received a call where he was told that the Koreans had escaped. Joe Maldock learned from Yandian guys that behind Youngji is a whole group of high school students. Joe Maldock said they might have already planned on stealing the money, so let's gather and beat them. Hyung saved Hajin, and Hajin thanked them and asked about Ant. Hyung was shocked to hear that he also wanted to meet Ant, so Hajin told him he also had some business to do with Ant. On the boat, Ji Gongji's workers had captured and tied Ant. Ji Gongji had taken off Ant's teeth, and her mouth was bleeding. He said he would also remove Ant's eyes after the typhoon stops. One of his members ran to him and broke the news that a guy holding a white envelope got on the boat and created chaos. Hajin told Hyung to work together as the guys on the boat would start to flock. Hajin told him to find the ant, and he will keep luring away the guys on the ship during that time. Hyung found the ant and knocked down two of the manager's workers. He then fought Ji Gongji and got to ant. She felt relief, hoping that when Hyung freed her, she would run away, but Hyung punched her and asked about Dajin's mother. Kim stopped Hyung from further beating her and said they were taking Ant. Hajin fought many guys on the boat, and others were convinced of his strength, so when Hajin said to let him go peacefully, they didn't resist and gave him the way. At the Inter-Korean Conference, a request came in advance from the North to do a cultural event for the North and South cooperation. The first man asked if they get away with throwing out Do Young Sunbi and suggested they needed to do preliminary research on the number of people and organizations going to the north. He was shocked to read the letter and realized they were all connected to Hajin. Im Tong was sitting where Hajin and Hyung had taken the ant and tied her upside down. He inquired if they would kill her. Hajin said that before deciding that he needed some information from the ant, he asked her to tell him about the voice fishing organization as she was the one who introduced Youngji to voice fishing. She decided to answer him. She told him this organization was run by Joe Malduck, who's called Joe Stake because he dug a body out of his grave and drove a stake in it. He looks like a healthy businessman, and he does voice fishing by using personal information that he collects through the moving center. When one moves, it's easy for him to know about one's family. He steals documents containing personal information. The money he gets runs his organization. Ant told him that her role in this organization was to connect the money deliverers and get commissions. Im cut her off and suddenly remembered his interaction with Joe State. He went to where both criminals were kept in the washing machine, but due to the members' negligence, they could run away. He was angry and was inquiring about them when a big car broke the wall. After the dust settled, he saw that the one coming out of the car was Joe State, who said these were the guys who ran away with his money. Joe State was a member of the North organization. Eam remembered that he had met Joe State years ago and was a North Organization member. Eam remembers him as they operated a voice fishing and moving company together. Hyung said they didn't care about this and now want Ant back. Hajin said they wanted to get someone out of North Korea, and he had a plan. He asked Ant that she must have a strong network with North Korean defectors in China. So she replied that North Korea is in her palms and she can access anyone from anywhere. Hajin even asked about the Ningmyeon restaurant. She said that the restaurant he is talking about is a very dangerous place, but if they are in a hurry, it may take them a few days to cross the Yalu River, 
but it would be time-consuming to get to South Korea through Laos. Hyung insisted on getting Dajin's mother. The aunt said that because of gambling, she is out of money and needs money. Hyung punched her. Hajin received a call that the laundry room was messed up. Hajin investigated the room and asked about Yidak. He learned that Joe State had kidnapped him and demanded $100 million with settlement money and interest. Hajin made a plan and went to meet Joe State. He sent Jong to save Yidak. Joe State's members demanded the money when he went to the van, but Jiang beat the man. All the members in the parking lot came out to beat Jiang. On the other hand, Hyung and Kim went near the boat where Ji Gongji and his members, terrified of Jan, were trying to find Hajin and his friends that took Ant away. He noticed Hyung and Kim and recognized them. They began to chase them and finally went to the parking lot where Joe State's men were ready for a fight against Jiang. Ji Gongji thought all of these were involved with Hyung's friends, and he went here to take refuge with them. So they began to fight them, and a whole mess started. Joe State and Mr. Jang's groups became rivals and started a fight. Hajin was sitting with Joe Malduk, who called his workers to ask how they let anyone like Hajin enter his place. Eam and his members broke the door and said that they had come to his place to repay a debt. Chinese and Korean groups were killing each other and didn't seem to end it peacefully. Hyung and Kim stood on the car roof, looking at the scenario with interest. Then they decided to eat a meal with the mother. Kim asked Hyung what to do with Yidak. Hyung said that Hajin asked him to lure the Yanbian guys, but he didn't say anything about saving Yidak. Hajin and Yim fought Joe Malduk, who was very strong. Hajin and Joe Malduk fought, and he asked Hajin if he was from the Namsan side. Hajin said that he's from the north side. Joe Malduk inquired why he was doing this to him when they were both from the same side. Hajin said that Joe Malduk losing his job was for the benefit of Hajin. Hajin's friend once told him that Joe State and Yom Tong are different as his family was taken hostage in North Korea, and his loyalty to the North is unusual. Hajin replied that if he couldn't coax him, he would make North throw him away. Hajin said that whoever betrays his republic, he will make sure to throw him away. One agent received a message that Parrot number 47 escaped. The other agent confirmed that it was code for Joe State. The former agent said he would be dealt with the same way as any other who would have done the same. Hajin was fighting Joe State, but he was fat, giving Hajin a tough time. Hajin told him he was there on order from the task force to punish Joe State. He remembered his discussion with his friend that if any family defects, it is considered a betrayal. Joe State kicked Hajin and picked a sharp bone. But instead of attacking Hajin, he attacked Yom Tong and escaped. Hajin advised him to use first aid and went to chase Joe State, who had left with his money back. Joe was shocked to hear that Task Force sent Hajin to punish him. He was curious to know if his family was defective. He noticed Hajin chasing him, kicked a person on his bike, and sat on his bike to escape Hajin. But Hajin continued chasing him. Finally, Hajin caught him and took his money bag when he noticed the agents there who asked for the bag and offered him to join task force. In the task force meeting, the agents discussed that the local gangs are absorbed in the Gusen region to help the North organization. One of the agents asked about the possibility of defection, so another agent replied that Hajin wanted to become successful and protect his sister. Another agent said that the North organization has the largest capital in South Korea and should approach it right. Otherwise, they would lose money. The former agent replied that he had chosen Hajin to monitor Task Force. Joe State's parents were captured and tortured by Task Force, but they were in favor of their son and said that he was a Republican hero, and the agent misunderstood him. The agent read out the list of his committed crimes and said that their son had created even more difficult as he had committed suicide. He then sent his parents to the prison in Guangdong, where they were tortured. Hajin told his friend that he is in special task force now, and his friend told him that the central director's office reported that the police took some of the kids. Joe State's business was involved in voice fishing that has been taken down, so it took much work to become a powerhouse inside the North organization. And since Hajin is in task force, he has the possibility of rising to higher positions. Hajin insisted on taking a photo with him in the photo booth. Still, he further told him that the North would serve a peace event for Nimeon and Hajin could see his sister if he performed well, and also that Doong Sunbi's life was worth 300 million won. Hajin told him not to worry about money as he had made 3 billion won. His friend inquired how Hajin had gotten all the money, so Hajin told him that Joe Stake had taken all the money from his bank account and used it all in short. The proceeds were 10 times the investments, and Hajin took his coin in account. Hajin was sitting with Sibyok when Yidak came to ask why he abandoned him in the van, and Hajin apologized. Jiang was concerned about Sibyuk's health and brought her Choco Pang as she felt unwell. 
Yidek said that not Hajin but Hyung came to save him. Kim was grateful to Hyung as he saved his mother so she could escape safely from the north. Youngji cooked a meal for the grandma, who seemed inspired and suggested her marriage. She then hears someone at the door and sees a bag full of money. Youngji felt relieved. It was Hajin's friend who came on the demand that Hajin give money to the grandma whom Joe Stake scammed. Youngji spent the money on the damage expenses and Hajin wanted to lighten her burden. There was a restaurant in the neighborhood that served human meat, and Hajin was taken there when he was merely 18 days old. Two agents noticed a baby in the warm water mixed with medicinal herbs as there were spots on the baby's body. The agents were concerned as nobody except them knew anything. One of them told the other to tell everyone that they had killed the killers and left the baby in the village. Hajin was sent to an orphanage where a brutal in charge gave him less food. Once he demanded more food, the in charge hit him with a stick. A girl came who was new to work. The in charge forced her into the room. This infuriated Hajin, and he beat the in charge with the stick until he bled. Hajin became terrified and ran to the village. He was very weary and untidy, so people were looking at him in the crowd. Two of the officers came to the crowd and noticed him there. He ran to them and demanded to kill him. He then fell unconscious, and when he woke up, he found himself in a clean bed, and a man was offering him food. There was a girl beside the man too. That day, Hajin found his name and his family. One day, he fought with Lieutenant Colonel's son and beat him well for mocking his sister Hayam. Hajin was the son of a subordinate officer, but the colonel found it impressive that he fought for his sister and knew how to protect her. He said that when he grew up, he would be a valuable asset to the Republic. He gave him money to buy himself and his sister food. The officers were standing in front of the picture of the leader, Kim, when they noticed that two young men from South Korea came to serve them, named Comrade Song Dayong and Sung Jiwon. An officer told his team members that the bastards sitting on the top were getting fat, and the other people had nothing to eat. He told them about the operation, Don, that they would perform to assassinate Number One, a code name given to someone. Hajin with his sister went outside to enjoy themselves. Hajin met the lieutenant colonel's son, who told him that his family would soon be moving to China, leaving him behind as he was not a part of the family and was adopted. Hajin heard his parents talking about moving to China, and his father said not to tell the kids as three of them would be going. This disturbed Hajin, and Colonel Sun said his family would return him to the orphanage. In the meeting, the officer said some spies would want to smuggle themselves into China. One of the officers suggested monitoring the kids of such spies as the mother is always with the children. Hayong was worried as Hajin acted weird and didn't have time for her. Her friend came to her and told her that Hajin was not his brother but an orphan, and this news came from her brother Yong Chul. Hayong became irritated and pushed her away. Hajin saw this and asked her to apologize to her friend, but she began to cry and said that he was not her real brother and ran to her parents. When Hajin came home, he apologized and presented her with a scarf he had brought for her, which she would wear in China. Hajin's parents told him that he was a part of the family and was taking him to China. Only his father will stay there as he had business before joining them in China. While they were talking, some officers broke the door, kicked Hajin's father, and announced him as the traitor of the Republic. An officer said that Kim yun set out to Ryangseong Station, and they needed to start Don's operation. Then some other officers entered and started mass killing, leaving an officer sitting in the mid to survive. An officer went to kill yang -soo, and his whole family panicked. Hyung bit the officer's hand and tried to escape while the officer hit her. Yang Su said that why are they persecuting them? The officer said he had heard his son about moving to China while buying a scarf. Hajin ran to tell him that all he was saying was merely a lie to buy her sister a present. The officer said that Hajin also shows traits of a traitor like his father. Hajin's mother was shot dead, and he was warned that his sister would be killed if he told a lie again. The officer gave him the gun and asked him to shoot his father to save him and his sister. His father yelled at Hajin for being a spy and said he wanted to sell Hajin. But Hajin moved around and wanted to shoot the officer who snatched the gun from his hand and killed Hajin's father. Hajin's father said he is now the head of the family and should take care of his sister. The officer sent the children to Hamjiang province. Hajin remembered his father saying that sometimes people say exactly the opposite of what they want to say. Hajin made a gang of young orphan boys four years later who brought a man to their place and asked him to leave his money. The boys threw stones at the man, and Jang and Yong, the gang's vice leader, took out his wallet. The man had all the North Korean money, but that would suffice for their food. Hajin appreciated him. Song Jiwon asked his senior about the progress towards saving senior Dayong. This infuriated him, and he said he had died in action four years ago. Jiwon attacked his senior, but he punched his face and said that history is written on blood. 
the officers captured Dayong, but he hadn't spoken a word for four years. The officer decided to pick a hero from the next generation and start at Il-sung's university. Dayong was loyal to South Korea and spat on the officer's face. Hajin and his sister were eating when one team member broke the news that some people were capturing the children. Hajin ran to save his friends and beat one officer, but the other officer started shooting kids, which made Hajin terrified. Hajin started to beat his friends so that the officers would take him and not hurt his friends. Hajin wanted to protect his sister. He then fell unconscious and found himself in the prison. The officer was impressed by the dedication of Hajin to protect his sister. They took Hajin and sent his sister to Pyongyang Section 5. Hajin yelled to return his sister, but the officer said he had to become a revolutionary warrior who protects the nation. General Kim Jong decided to keep the orphans warm. Therefore Korean's People Army established a separate orphanage where the orphans would be offered quality education so that they might become revolutionary warriors for serving the nation. Hajin had served the Republic for five years and performed three Chinese espionage operations and two Russian operations. The officer gave Hajin the next operation to go to South Korea. Hajin went there with great difficulty at the risk of being caught but successfully went to the embassy, where he said he was a spy and wanted to defect. Then Hajin was given a new identity. Finally, Hajin found a chance for freedom and to find Hyo. Hajin went to his home and physically exercised when Youngji entered with groceries. Hajin took leave and planned to bring Yongjun Intelligence Service and the Bukdu group on his side. The man from the task force organization came to Hajin to tell him about his special mission. The agents took him to give him basic guidelines regarding his mission in the prostitution establishment. Jiang and his brother, Sikyung, were playing FIFA and had a bet that if Jiang won, Sikyung would give him money. When Jiang won the bet, Sikyung gave him 50k won and asked if he were free tomorrow night, then he would give him a present. Jiang puts the amount in his account from Sikyung every month. Kang Hyonho, the group lord of the Jiangsan faction, entered the room and said that even though Jiang and Sikyung were getting across, they shouldn't cross the line. Then he called Jiang and told him that a spy could betray him anytime, so he must be careful. Jiang met Sikyung to get the present. He took Jiang to a cell. Jiang saw many prostitutes there and wanted to get out, but Sikyung kicks him inside. Sikyung said that the pocket money he gave to Jiang would be used against him to prove that he was the manager of the prostitution establishment, and police would be there any minute. Jiang looked disturbed. Jiang tried to call his dad, but the cell had no mobile service. He kicked the door till it opened. Some men came and tried to capture him. Shin Duho said that as Jiang is strong, he got some insurance. Jiang was shocked to notice Hajin there who attacked him. Those people from the forces told him he was alone, so he blamed Jiang. The special task force aimed to help the New World Gang take over black society. In this way, they will set up roots in the South Korean society. Hajin and Jiang fight and Jiang falls unconscious. At the dinner table, Ra Jin, CEO of Yang Jun Sales and Distribution and others were waiting for the mother. Ra Hong Tak, the eldest son of the Yang Jun group, said that although she was not her birth mother, she raised him. He proposed that it was time for Senator Jang Heejin's eldest son to get married. But Ra Hong he seemed suspicious regarding his brother's meetings with some people. Jiang found himself in the cell with police trying to capture him and prostitutes calling him their boss. He managed to escape and knew that the prostitutes were not the victim but on the same side as Sikyong. He remembered Hajin telling him to run when the police came. He saw Liam, who came to help him. Kang Hyonho asked Sikyong if the New World Gang was planning against him. Sikyong looked obedient and said you already knew this as you are not helping Youngman. But Kang said that he would not let their plan succeed. Liam asked if he was Sibyuk's friend and told him that his father had contacted Hongmi for help. Special task force agents discussed Ep Tikyung's life on the way downhill. One of them said he chose Hajin because he wanted to befriend him. Liam took Jiang out of that place and told him that this trap had been planned long ago, and that by tomorrow, they would drop the search order for Jiang. Jiang seemed disturbed and said he needed to know about the guys who framed him in the prostitution place. Liam helped him look through the things and remember what he saw there. Jiang remembered a white Kia Soul car, and Liam said he noticed the same car and its number plate too. Hajin thought that if he wanted to save Haeung at the time of the fourth summit, he needed to get the black organization on his side. He needed to strengthen his relations with Kang Hyonho, and for that, he needed proof that Kang Jiangmin's situation was a scheme plotted by the North Organization and the New World Gang. They gave Hajin documents regarding the prostitution establishment and told him that the New World Gang had taken the business ledgers from them. Hajin decided to get to the place where the ledger was kept. 
a man was standing beside the white car and offering a girl to ride with him when Jiang and Liam got there and beat him up. Other guys rushed towards them. Three men came and asked Jiang and Liam what was wrong with them, why they interfered with business, and what want from them. Hajin and Yong attack those men and beat them. One man is escaping, but Jiang stops him. He is so afraid and begs to let him go, and he says he went to the shop at Yuljir, saw the police car, and left. They check his phone and wallet and find nothing, and he seems like a local customer. They talked about their wrong guess and should the back to Yuljira when a girl is a haughty excuse and told she didn't know Yuljira, but she received a similar offer. They both got shocked girl gave them a card. Hajin went to the restaurant Dalem Dong the address man told him where the money was collected, so he got straight to a man and asked him where he sent the money that he got from the cutter. Gan said he only asked once man replied he didn't know. Hajin throws his food. All men come to stop him, but he beats them. A man hiding behind the table trying to call someone Hajin spotted him. Then he slandered and told him the money goes to Inchin Gambler's boat, and the envelope appearance and amount. Hajin went to the seaport. One man told the guards to open Tha Gate, and he got a call from Dilim Dong. In the office, an older woman consulted a girl and suggested she work for a month so she could start a new life. Old she needs to rationally, not emotionally, or she wants to go to her father's house, which lays his hands on her. Her daughter standing behind her also manipulate her and tells her she always makes wrong choices. That's why her life is like this, so she just listens to her mother. The girl agreed. Jiang and Liam came woman asked how they came, and Hajin replied by car. The man took Hajin to the office. Hai asked if he was Mr. Jang, and he said that's what people call him. Hajin asked to hand over the Cutter Gang account book. The man asked if he was not curious why they let him in. Hajin said they should think again if they wanted to strike him down. The man liked his confidence and understood why Mr. Jang was interested in him. I need help getting him. Then he introduces him to the real Mr. Jang. Hajin left, shocked to see him. Hajin is shocked to see Jang and Zhao. He is his childhood friend. In the office, Liam shows a pic of Miss Yan and asks how old she recognizes her. Her daughter refused to know her. Jiang put her head on the desk and told her mother he didn't hesitate to beat women, and because of her, their shop suffered losses. And again, I asked about mission. That lady said she only introduced her to an entertainment agency, and she doesn't know. After that, Jiang brags to Liam that this is a piece of cake. The woman shouted again. Liam punched her face and asked who did she sell the kids to. Jiang said seven years ago that when all their comrades were bleeding to death, he held his breath and saved his life, and he should join hands with him to rescue the other two who were taken away, and now he understands he had to protect Heung, and he has no grudges as it was a long time ago, but work is work, and if he wants information on the Cutter Gang, he has to take him down. The woman said she needed money as counselors' salaries were poor, so she sent good-looking children to entertainment for a fee and they used them as VIP producers and songwriters. They went to the LUVL Entertainment Office, and the guards considered them producers and took them to the lounge to entertain. Suddenly, a fat man came, and he was the one to pay a brokerage fee to the center. They took these kids and used them for VIP. He replied it's human marketing. Jiang sees a profile on the list. He remembers he sees him in Yuljiro. Upon asking, the manager told them she was no longer there because the drugs messed her up too much and they sent her to a shop in Jongro. They went to that shop, but there was no one and much mess and many receipts on the floor. Liam picked one, the same one they saw in Li Mingu's wallet. Hajin and Jang start fighting. Jang sat on his shoulder and bit his hands, and told Hajin his moves were now dull. Hajin throws him into the wall and says he will get serious from now on. 